Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. But I do believe they're going to obviously reload that department. It depends on what Rudolph does or what they offer him and where his mind is. But let's say he does come back. What do you think will happen training camp to start the season? Who will be their number one choice at quarterback? Or do you think it's already predetermined because Pickett was their number one pick? It's him. Feels predetermined. We know, you and I both know, the viewers, the listeners know, first-round picks get a lot of chances in the NFL uh, by and large. It's very rare to see somebody flame out of the league completely within a couple of years or, in Kenny's case, uh, just lose their job and never get it back. I think there will be a competition, and I do think Deontay Johnson, that was an eye-opening quote today in the sense that he was willing to just come straight out and say it, Bob, but I think it, it, it creates this dynamic. You saw it as well as I did. I think Dan Moore after the game, Jalen Warren on cleanout day, they all talked about this increased camaraderie that the offense had late in the season. Rudolph straight away said it. I, I think it's all pretty obvious where those comments are pointing back to. Hey, when this guy came in, we started scoring. Suddenly, everybody was singing the same tune. Johnson saying what he said, that he's always been a Mason backer, that he hopes he wins the job. Uh, if you have a competition, let's say, between Mason and Kenny in camp next year, how can that Johnson quote not be in the back of everyone's mind and you're wondering how many other guys on the offense agree with him and are just hoping against hope that Rudolph wins the job? Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. Uh, but I think they're also going to bring somebody else in. I think that's going to be one thing we follow a lot in this offseason, whether it's a free agent. I don't know that a draft pick will be able to compete, but if they do bring in a free agent, I'll be interested to find out because Mitch Trubisky will not be back. Uh, it looks like to me. Uh, by the way, whoever decides to hire the offensive coordinator, and the one thing the Steelers have always done, I think you know this as well as everyone else who's followed for many years, is that they keep all of that stuff pretty much in-house, whether it's um, draft picks, whether it's who makes what call. You never really know, although I do know that Mike Tomlin normally is the man who picks his own coaching staff. So uh, that'll be a topic. I'm not sure we're going to get an answer to it, though, Chris. We'll probably not get an answer to it, and you're right. They like to play this little shell game with everything so nobody can take any of the blame when something goes wrong. Well, Kevin and Mike worked collaboratively on the draft, and Art had a big voice in the room. It's like, it's like they want to all insulate themselves from potential blowback if something goes wrong, which has the uh, added kind of, I guess, not benefit, but the added consequence of maybe shielding uh, anybody from particular praise. I'll be honest, Bob. Uh, I would not want Mike Tomlin to make this offensive coordinator hire. He's hired Matt Canada or promoted him, brought him along. He promoted Randy Feekner. Uh, the last time they had a really good coordinator on that side of the ball, I felt like was Todd Haley, and that was an Art Rooney hire. Mm -hmm. I, you know, this sounds harsh. Mike Tomlin does not have any, any real basis here in terms of guys he's hired as offensive coordinators to be trusted with such an important thing. Uh, and so I wouldn't if I were the Steelers. I'd get Omar Khan, I'd get Andy Weidel, I'd get Art Rooney very much involved in that process. Yeah, and you're right. Haley was uh, probably the most successful one they've had during that entire time. We have a lot to get into. We'll talk about Jake Gensel's future because uh, Josh gets off on the radio side of their uh, 105. Uh, had a very interesting interview with Kyle Dubas. I think that's worth talking about. We'll get into that. We're also going to talk about well, what's going on with... Uh, I lost my train of thought. But something, Chris. You want to go pit we'll basketball? What back. do you want to do here? Pit <laughs> basketball, Mike five, McCarthy? Seven, five. Good, Come we're on. going to a break. 412-575-2600. <laughs> That's the number to call. If you do, you'll be on here, KDK Plus, as well as 93.7 The Fan. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Our GMC Sierra Tweet of the Night comes from Adam Schefter, and this is about... Uh, the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, who will remain there, Mike McCarthy, is being brought back. It'll be the final year of his contract. Where it is, he won't get an extension down there. It'll be one year left, and, you know, based on whatever happens this year, although his regular season uh, was a good one at 12-5. and five. They won that division, although the Eagles fell off, Chris. And, boy, the Eagles, what a disaster that turned out to be. This goes to show you, you know, how tough it is to try to look at this and make predictions and understand, like, when they were 10-1, and one, the Eagles, I mean, Jalen Hurst looked like a legit MVP candidate. And all of a sudden, they fall off. This reminded me very much of the Steelers when they started 11-0 and what happened after them. I mean, they got blown out at home to the Browns in that terrible playoff game, which started with the pouncy snap over the head of Roethlisberger. Well, this one, they go down to Tampa and, and get blown out by Baker Mayfield and company. Uh, it's amazing how fast it can change. 
Well, Philly's proof positive that you can be a little bit cavalier with coaches and win. They got Doug Peterson to win them a Super Bowl. Then he was gone not long after. Nick Sirianni got him to the Super Bowl. Uh, it's pretty obvious that Jonathan Gannon and Shane Steichen had a lot to do with that because Sirianni's on thin ice. Bob, I do find it instructive. I've got my Mulsey uh, X's and tweets of the night. Uh, these are two national reactions. I'll read them to you on the McCarthy staying in Dallas news. Okay. Dan Orlovsky, I like Dan Orlovsky a lot. I think he's really smart. He mm -hmm. said, he tweeted, not serious about winning a Super Bowl, all talk. Kyle Brandt, who to his credit, uh, I think tried to dispel some of the, the kind of constant praise Mike Tomlin gets nationally, wrote, the Cowboys are going to give McCarthy another shot. My God, that's some 100% pure, grass-fed, organic definition of insanity stuff <laughs> right there. I bring this up to ask you, Mike McCarthy's had a bunch of 12-win seasons. He has flamed out in the playoffs. I think most people assume because of the latter part of that that he would get fired. Why is there such a difference in the mm. way that guy is, is being talked about in the way that Mike is being talked about where I had to listen on ESPN this morning to one of their panelists say, I almost hope Mike would leave Pittsburgh so that those basically those idiot Steelers fans, I'm paraphrasing and projecting here, would understand what it's like to not have a great head coach. I just don't, I don't really understand it, other than Mike is very friendly with the national media, very quotable, and guys like McCarthy largely are not. Yeah, but if you look at the records, they're almost identical. Regular season and McCarthy has a better postseason record. And I will say sure. this, I mean, honestly, if you look back, Mike Tomlin had the benefit of a Hall of Fame quarterback for many, many years. Uh, and and some, some of the best wide receivers in the game, you know, uh, and yet they weren't able to do much in the playoffs. So, yeah, they, they've gone out of it, but they had the weaponry to get it done. It was here. It was present. You had Hall of Fame people uh, because I consider it's Antonio just, it's Brown to be a Hall of Famer, too. Of course, so do I. It's just very odd. One guy, I can't believe they're bringing this guy back. What a joke by the Cowboys yeah, to do know. this. And then in the other case, the other case, it just doesn't make sense. It's can you believe Mike Tomlin dragged the Steelers kicking and screaming to 10 and 7? What a performance. I just... I tire of that narrative being played out at the national level over and over again, and today was just a perfect yeah. case study. Yeah, and the fact is they were 6-3, and three and they lost two home games to two of the worst teams in the NFL, so that's also part of it. Yep. All right, let's get to the lines, and our first caller tonight is our number one Cochran and Go One Better caller of the night. That will be Michael in Penn Hills. What's up, Michael? How are you? Hey, good. How you guys doing? Good. I have a question, two questions uh, regarding the wild card. Doing the play with Joey Porter to make an attack, well, it seemed like he was on his knees and another guy hit him from behind. Isn't that sort of the same call as a lineman engaging with another lineman and a running back hits him low? Should have been penalized. Sort of flag on that. I agree. And the second one, the second question is on Josh Allen running and faking the slide. Hmm. Isn't that a rule? I don't like that. And, and, and it's not because I, you know, Josh Allen's a tremendous athlete. And, but the rule has made all these defenders not know what to do. And when there's a hesitation, if you're about to tackle him or you look to line him up, and the Steelers, first of all, had a horrible tackling day. Let's get that out there. But, Chris, if you're trying to get to him and he does that and you hold up, then he turns it on, you're not going to catch him. He's six foot four, 260 pounds, and he could run like the wind. Later, it's Miles Jack who comes in, and he's in the same position. There's a first down to be had. He's going toward it. If you know Josh Allen, he runs through contact. So are you supposed to let up? And if you don't, you're going to get penalized. I just don't like what's happened to – it's tough enough to play defense in this league. Now they're making it tricky on top of everything else. Well, Jack, on the play that got flagged, didn't even touch his head. There was no contact right. to Josh Allen's head whatsoever. He literally missed. Um, the other one, at first I thought, uh, that's sour grapes. The guy's just a great athlete. He never – I think the slide rule, the way they write it, Bob, is that you can't, like, start to go down, like, bend down like Kenny did against Wake Forest, right? And Josh Allen just stood straight up and kind of pitter-pattered his feet, but he was abusing the spirit of the rule. He made it look like he was slowing down. So this sounds barbaric, but what's going to have to happen is he or somebody else is going to have to try that little stunt again and a particularly ill-tempered defender, maybe the Broncos' Kareem Jackson, or he might have even gotten cut by them. Some guy who's gotten suspended for violent play is just going to have to run right through him helmet first, and then we'll see if Josh Allen does it again. Yeah, I'm just of the belief that once you go, if you're going to decide to run and you're a running back, period. You, you know, if you give yourself up, okay, it has to be, but you can't be messing around with it and having these guys just hesitate and then you kick it in because you know what you're doing and they don't. 
All right, let's back to the lines we go. We got Joe in North Versailles. Hey, Joe, what's up? Yeah, I just want to talk about nothing changes if nothing changes. And, and I just don't see where it goes with uh, Coach Tomlin and the Steeler way, uh, which is never have a losing season. You know, I'm just looking down the list of these teams. Buffalo has had a losing season since the, the last play playoff win by the Steelers. Cleveland, four losing seasons. Houston, three, you know, and I could keep going. All these teams that made the playoffs who had losing seasons. So that doesn't stop you from eventually returning to, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the playoffs. It helps you. World. It helps you to return. It helps you to return. Yeah, what what was the consequence the of the last losing season for the Steelers? Ben Roethlisberger being drafted by the Steelers after the 03, 6 and 10 yeah, year. Correct. I mean, it often. It, 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 the NFL is designed actually for bad losing seasons if you draft the right players to help you become good again. That is the entire purpose of why the league's draft is set up the way uh, that it is. I, I just, yeah, I would echo that sentiment though. It's, it's proof positive that not having a losing season is not only not something that's worthy of being lauded, it's actually something that can and often does hurt a team's efforts to rebuild and be competitive. But, and I'm not going to fall into the thing about talking about 17 years of a non-losing, but I do think it's important, and I think when you look at the way the Steelers have done it, drafting in the middle largely, they've still maintained competitively all the way through the course of a season, and as long as you get yourself in there and win some games, that's all good. So I think they've navigated that part of it. It's just winning these games, and more specifically, Chris, it's how they start these games. Every single one of them in the last five has been a blowout by halftime, and first quarters have been nothing. Uh, to me, that's more of an indictment of things than anything else. Well, who are the quarterbacks they've lost to? Josh Allen pick, uh, what, eight overall in his mm -hmm. draft? Maybe seven, I forget. Mahomes was pick 10 or 10, 11 in his 10. draft. 10. Baker yeah. Mayfield, number one overall pick in his draft. The only time the Steelers have picked that high recently, they took an inside linebacker at 10th overall. So <laughs> you say that they've done well in the middle, and they have, but you usually need access to one of the top 10, literally 10 picks in the draft if you're going to try to find the difference-making quarterback that in those games I just mentioned, Bob, yeah. has made the difference. Unless you're the L.A. Rams and you do it a different way and you trade for one and you have a guy that you trade back and forth. You know, they've done it without a lot of uh, high-end draft picks, but they, you know, they've done it in a different way and they spent money in free agency. So there's always two different ways. Real quick, I want to ask you about Jake Gensel. I mean, we have more callers. I'll try to get you when we come back. But because I thought it was interesting that Kyle Dubas, today, he has a decision on his hands. These guys around him making similar numbers are getting $11 million a year. Jake Gensel is underpaid based on all of this at $6 million. He's coming up on the end of a season, and if he doesn't have a deal, he'll be an unrestricted free agent unless they trade him on March the 8th. What do you think most likely will happen there? I think he's going to get traded. I think they're going to look at him as a massive chip that they can use to try to fortify the team. And I think they might even say that, that as much as he does something very valuable in the NHL, which is just have a natural goal-scoring ability, they have guys who can do that. Sidney Crosby still doing that at a very high level, right? I mean, they have some depth, or they, they would hope that they have some depth. I could see them trading him, and I think they will. It's just a gut call. Uh, I think there's a variety of reasons why they could do it or would do it, uh, and I think they will do it. Well, I would expect if that's the case, then they should get – uh, pretty good uh, amount of uh, draft capital, but also players, because they're going to need players to come in and, and compensate for his loss if they do trade him before the playoffs. All right, we're going to take a break, come back with more. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. We're live on KDK Plus and 93.7 The Fan. Don't go away. Joe and Aetna. Hey, Joe. Yeah, uh, how are you doing tonight? Good, what's um, up? I'm, I'm still irritated because I thought Ross Grimm should have had the job before Tomlin because he had a, his time in and he was with the Steelers all that time. But that's, a, that's all well, I, got, I, I don't think you could look back and second guess the hiring. I mean, I think, I mean, what are you supposed to do at that point? Anyway, I want to ask you, Chris, about something else here. Uh, and you and I follow the NBA. I saw your tweet last night. And I got a kick out of it because I happened to be thinking the same thing when I saw the play. <laughs> and it makes me wonder, you know, the Euro step comes into basketball. For those of you who don't know what that is, you should watch the NBA. You'll see what it does. But regardless, there was a steal of James Harden. Oklahoma City player comes down. He takes at least four. There may have been more steps en route to a dunk. Is it just that they want to give up the play? Here's a dunk. He's going to dunk. We're not going to call any of this. But it seems like traveling is a lost thing in the NBA. 
I would rather see it called in like situations in the half court. Believe it or not, I almost find these like obvious he's going to score breakaway dunks comical. Let him take six steps. Who cares? <laughs> Do something cool. Also, as uh, so I, Tim Benz pointed this out, he just had ripped James Harden while Harden was doing his usual spiel. No jury in the world would convict, Bob. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs>